Hello and welcome to this week's video. Now, this week is going to be the third in the series that I started probably six to eight weeks ago on um, how to start out in wildlife photography using entry level kit. And it's actually going to be the last video uh, where I'm based at home. Um, I thought it was just, just going to be useful to um, just have a look at how I've set my feeders and things up. Now, if anybody's not been following this series, what I'd suggest is you go back to episode one and I'll put a link up here to that. Um, but basically what we're doing is, I think the easiest way to start in wildlife photography, especially with sort of entry level kit. So really nothing above a 300 mil lens, if you like, um, is to shoot garden birds. Now, over the last few months, I set up a bird feeding station in my garden but I have made a couple of little changes to it over the last few weeks just to try and improve it and try and get some slightly different images. So anyway, this week's video I just thought it would be useful to go over what I've done so that for the people who've set up their own bird feeding stations at home you can actually you know, perhaps find a few little tips here that are going to help you to improve your images at home. Obviously when I do the next episode I'm going to be moving away from doing garden birds and we're going to move more out into um, actually wild creatures if you like that aren't being brought to you in your garden so um, there may be a little bit of a delay on that because we're under coronavirus uh, regulations here in the UK at the minute so I'm not allowed to travel. As soon as I can I'll be putting a video out where you know I do go a little bit further afield and we try and move this process forward. Anyway, so that's what I'm going to do today. Just going to show you around what I've done um, as regards to trying to get different images of birds and the, the problems that I had initially um, when I set up the feeders. And hopefully from there we can then, as I say, you can improve your images, pick up a few little tips, continue to get used to using your camera. And then when we come to the next episode, um, yeah, we'll be doing something completely different. So what problems did I have when I initially set up um, the feeders here at home? Well, unfortunately for me, we've got quite a wide garden, so it might not be something that affects a lot of people. But what that meant is because this hide, as you can see here, tin shed, is fixed to the floor. I can't move it anywhere. It's here. It's been here for years. Um, so this is what I was going to use for a hide. Now the cover for the birds is actually across the other side of the garden, the best place I could find from here to take images. What you'll find with birds is they want some cover to be in before they come out to a feeder because obviously you know they're a prey source for things like sparrow hawks and cats so they will want some cover to get into quickly to give themselves a chance of getting away. What I discovered initially when I put the feeders up is because we've got a wide garden and I'm located here and the cover is right across the other side I wanted to put the feeders in the middle of the garden now it was obvious from early on that the birds weren't confident with that because they were sort of flying halfway towards it and then going back under cover they just didn't feel confident enough that they could get back under cover if they got into trouble if something you know a predator came along so what I did is I moved it to a position that was comfortable for them which meant moving it further away from me now what I've done over the last couple of weeks the birds are obviously really comfortable with that so literally just on a weekly basis I've, I've moved the feeders sort of 10 centimeters 15 centimeters closer to me um, and the perches as well so just literally move the whole apparatus closer to me by you know this much now that's enough to inch it closer to me um, but it's also enough that the birds don't recognize a difference and get freaked out about it and stop coming to the feeders so that's number one and obviously if you can do that over a few weeks and what I've probably done is probably got about two or three feet closer to me which I'm comfortable with now shooting at now the, what that does is for me is it, there's two things really one it um, has the effect that the perches that I'm setting up are further away from that background that the birds are using for cover. What that means is when I take an image of that bird, the background um, is going to be more blurred. So you help, you'll hear talk, people talk about pocker. Um, all that is really is how blurred the background is um, compared to your subject. And obviously if you've got a really busy background with twigs and things sticking up, 
then and it's right behind the bird it becomes very distracting and the bird sort of fades into the background which is what you don't want the bird is the main you know subject the thing that you want to stand out so to make it stand out the more blurred the background the better unless you're going for some sort of shot where you want to show the environment more but as i say if you're looking for a a shot where the, the the bird actually stands out then yeah that's what you're looking for is to um, blur the background so bringing the purchase closer to me has that effect okay and what it also does is um, it enables me with this 300 mil lens to fill the picture more with the bird so obviously when it was further away I was having to crop the image more um, now as soon as obviously I'm bringing it closer to me the birds are getting bigger in the picture it means I have to crop the image less and it means that I've got more detail in the image you know I'm not cropping as much out and you know having to zoom that image in closer now one of the advantages of having this set up at home and if you'll remember when I first set this up I actually was going to set it up um, down by the river um, because um, just from the noise from the road you're probably not getting it too much today. I hope you're not anyway on this mic but you are getting the noise of people in their gardens I think there's a bit of a party going on down there um, socially distanced of course anyway um, one of the advantages you've got of it of your setup being at home is every time you're walking around in the house and you glance out of the window you can actually see what's coming to your feeders and obviously what's coming to your feeders you will then dictate what you put in the feeders and how you change the feeders and perhaps what perches that you use so basically i've had a couple of things come that are slightly more unusual i mean not dead unusual but we had goldfinches come so i'm i hadn't got a i just got a normal seed feeder up and they came to that so once i saw that i got a couple of goldfinches on there what i did is i, I put a niger seed feeder up now goldfinches love niger seed and it's been really weird this year because the goldfinches came back to the niger seed um had some niger seed disappeared and they've not been back so i, I don't know what's going on there normally um, the normal pa pattern of behavior is that once they locate a source of food they'll not only come back themselves but you tend to find that there's more and more goldfinches will come back and they'll just absolutely hammer it but well, that's not happened this time so whether there's another feeder somewhere quite close here that's also feeding niger seed i'm not sure but anyway i've left that up just in case something turns up i'm keeping my eye on the feeders at the minute as we talk because there's are, there is stuff turning up um but also what we had is a female great spotted woodpecker turned up and she does come back not 100 percent regularly but she is she is coming back so what you can see here i've set up is and this has worked for me in the past is obviously you don't want a picture of the woodpecker on the the nut feeder which is what she's coming to but what i've found in the past is if i set up a a stump near to the the feeder she will often come and land on that stump and um, before she goes on to the feeder. So that's what's happened in the past and I think I've showed this image before that I took um, on a similar setup. Now what you'll see also from that piece of video is what I also do is I tend to get my drill and drill some holes into the wood on the side so that not you can't see them from the front but what I'm looking for is a side shot of that woodpecker on that log um, but what I do is I'll drill some holes in there and I'll feed peanuts into there and push them into the holes from my side here where I'm set up you can't see them but if she comes along and hits the side of that um, tree stump that I've put down there what normally happens is if you don't do that you've got a couple of seconds to take a shot now if she sees those peanuts in there what she'll do is she'll do the normal behavior that a woodpecker would do on a tree stump and that is to start pecking at those um nuts and obviously getting a getting some food getting a feed and it from my side all i can see is that what she's what she's doing i can't see the nuts i can't see what she's eating at all so it does look quite natural and it looks quite nice so that's what i'm hoping to get over the next few weeks that's all achieved by being observant and it's a useful skill to have because when we move away from doing garden birds what I'm going to look towards is, is you're going to have to get out into your local environment and start to recognise things. So um, I'll go into this more in the next video, but 
you know you don't even have to have a camera with you but if you're like I do walking the dog every day I'm constantly looking for signs what's here what's been here how long ago was it here is it still here is it coming back why is it here asking all those questions because it might provide me with an opportunity to get an image and my last video I put out although it wasn't for beginners and I'll put a link up to that there was all about roe deer but it was only due to my observations that I knew that I had a sort of an 80% chance that the deer were going to be in a certain position at a certain time uh, because of the conditions that had been um, made in that area so when we move on to that this is where it all starts it's from your own back garden is observing what's going on when it's going on you know some of these birds will feed at quite regular times they tend to have really busy periods sort of mid-morning I find here and then sort of mid-afternoon it picks up again and then drops off but you have really busy periods so that's the time you want to be out in your hide getting some pictures um, and you'll recognize that from in the house you'll be able to see oh it's two o'clock yeah it's really busy and then by three there's nothing there you know so yeah it's just really all about observation and that, starting that process of observation from your own back door really will enable you to use that when we move into the countryside around your house and those skills you can then develop and use them there and then when you move away from your local area where you've got no idea what's in an area at all you can then use those skills again to at least give you a chance of getting a shot so it all does make you a better photographer in the end so yeah we'll move on to that next but yeah observation is critically important and it's something that you can practice all the time from your own back windows now i did just want to mention that um a lot of a lot of you if you're starting in wildlife photography you may want some feedback on your images or you may just want to show off your images that you've taken um, i actually have a photography group on facebook so if you look up scott tilly photography group on facebook um, it's a private group but if you ask to join I'd be quite happy to you know join you into the group now the thing I like about the group is I've set it up so that it's it's really non judgmental I've been in groups before where you'll put an image up and uh, or people will put an image up and it'll get you know people don't know how to critique an image properly and this forum that I've set up this group is not about critique at all now when I say that if you say to you know the group can you just give me some tips on how I can make this shot better or you know I've done this shot and I like it but I'm not quite sure about it people will then give you some tips but generally people don't comment on your photos all they'll do is either give you a thumbs up or a like or say great photo or whatever um, not really into getting negative comments because the group is really it's a diverse group of people so on there we have people who just go for a morning walk and will snap images as they're walking along through the local park and uh, we also have people who are um, very 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 skilled photographers uh, there's some wonderful bird photographers on there uh, some wonderful animal photographers so what we what i try to do is just say look you know if, if you want advice on there you can get it but just ask for it and i'll often comment you know if um I've, if somebody asks for some advice and um if you don't if you just want to put your images up and get a thumbs up for it then uh, you know that's what people will do so yeah um i'll put a link in the description as well how to get to that group uh, anybody who wants to join and you, again it's just another resource to pick up tips you can look at other people's images and you can see what kit they're using and you know if you get into your bird photography and you see that somebody else is doing bird photography and you see the stuff that they're doing it might be that you know you, you want to sort of follow the equipment that they're using or whatever when you upgrade so really useful really friendly group um, and yeah I would um, encourage you to join right and I think that's probably about it for this week I'll put any images that I've taken up today that you haven't seen at the end of this video it's been a really weird year for me as regards this feed station at home because it's been not a very diverse group of birds um, it's very strange um, 
so yeah uh, it's a while since i've had a bird feeding station set up at home because obviously normally i'm out and about taking images and yeah if you saw last week's video generally crawling about um so i've not really had time to set one up at home and and sort of follow it in in any great detail but it does seem to me that there's been a real drop off in the the number and types of bird um coming to your, your home feed stations i don't know whether that's the same around the country but that's certainly what i've noticed here from when i used to do it a lot um but yeah so that that's going to be it from this feed station i think what i'm going to do next we'll be moving away from here as i say there might be a slightly slight delay because um, it depends when we get out of lockdown and i can get to where i want to get to to do the uh, the, the video but yeah stick with it um as always if you've liked this video then please give it a thumbs up and if you've not subscribed to the channel then please think about subscribing and i would say to all my beginners who are just starting out in wildlife photography don't think that any of the other videos that i do aren't for you because they're not labeled as a beginner i do try and put tips in there when i'm doing my wildlife photography that will be useful to everybody um, not just if you've got a 600mm lens or whatever you're using um, in fact again last week's video actually that I shot with the Sony 200-600 um, there was so much crawling in it I would have been better off with this camera because I could crawl close enough um, but the camera was so heavy and cumbersome to get along while I was trying to carry a vlogging camera as well it was absolute nightmare um, so yeah this smaller camera and smaller lens would have been pretty useful actually um, so yeah don't think that you know just because you've not got that kit that there's nothing in that video for you just try and soak up as much as you can anyway thanks for watching I'll see you next time have a great week